everybody, it's Mike, KO4PDI, the ham fun guy. We're here with Ham Radio Deluxe. And your first name, my dear? Lindy. Lindy here is the daughter of the man who basically runs the company. But she's going to tell us about HRD. So tell me about this program. Why do I need this program? Yeah, so we call Ham Radio Deluxe the Swiss Army Knife of Ham Radio because it is so robust and comprehensive. It does log booking, it does rig and rotor control, satellite tracking. If you haven't checked out any of our videos on the website, you can see us making contact using the ISS and just some really, really fun stuff. Yeah, I love that it has, it can decode CW. Mm -hmm. It has your log information. You can do logging through it. It does the coster. Which yeah. I love. What I love about it is, like at night when I'm chilling and I want to just relax, I get off of FT8 and everything, and I'll just turn. The, I'll do some hunting on Parks on the Air late shift. Yeah. Or I'll do uh, just try to see what kind of DX stations I can hear. And I just put the cluster on the screen, and I click on a call sign, and my radio tunes to that frequency, and bam, I hear the guy or I don't hear the guy, and it's it's wonderful. It's so yeah. simple, and that's why I like it so much. Our tagline is "Take the work out of your hobby." Sounds right. like we're doing just that for you. <laughs> so. All right, and uh, now you, you're you with the company, mm -hmm. and they started how many years ago the Ham Radio Yeah, Deluxe so for? my dad with a couple of business partners, they bought the code back in 2012 and have just hit the ground running ever since. Lots of additions, lots of changes. Um, I did some sort of freelance off and on work as far as the marketing. Like right. all of this was designed by yours truly, the logo, it's all the backdrops. It's a wonderful thing. You like um, purple. Yeah, I, I do, I do. <laughs> I joined the company full time in 2019 okay. and um, have since then managed, you know, sales, all of our vendor relationships and uh, working with my dad has been so fun. So Excellent. it's really cool and to I'll keep tell it you, in the family. I'll tell you, what I like too is when I run into a brick wall and I can't figure it out, mm -hmm. I can go to their website, they got a bunch of videos on how to do every little thing, but sometimes it gets past you, like you, you miss like one stupid little thing yeah. and it doesn't work, you call them up and they'll call you back, they'll access your computer using TeamViewer or something like that and actually fix it for you, so you don't have to go crazy trying to figure it out. They're very good when it comes to service. Uh, I love I love Ham Radio Deluxe. Thank you. Our it tech support team really is. They are. Well, they're we're getting heckled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look who's heckling me. Look, look, look. Yeah. I just want to tell you, there's no. I get no respect here. I'm the Rodney Dangerfield of Ham Radio. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for giving me a little bit of time. Yeah, sure thing. I'm gonna go talk to your dad now too, yeah. and uh, he could tell me why the zeros and ones have to be this way or that way to make it work because yeah, he knows all the go. technical oh, stuff. Oh yeah, he oversees the development team. So you've been doing this since 19 full time. You guys are successful. Yeah. You, you can pay the rent. Yeah. It's working. Yeah, we have six developers working full time to keep building and improving the software. I am. I can't it's wait ongoing. until you get the software to the point that when I hook it up to my 7300, 7, I see my 7300 on the screen. It's going to be so cool. We're that, really That's going to be amazing. They've yeah. been working on that for years now. And it's not their fault it's not out yet. It's, it's very It's so close. <laughs> <laughs> it is close. It is close. Anyway, thank you very yeah, much for your time. Course, sure Have thing. a great show, and uh, yeah. I'll see you again in uh, Huntsville. Yep, awesome. Come to Huntsville. Thanks, everybody. It's me, Mike, KO4PDI, jumping in here just to tell you a little secret. Ham Radio Deluxe was so sweet. They gave me a $100 gift certificate, well, $99 gift certificate for Ham Radio Deluxe for the benefit I'm running for James Lee, which will be March 9th at the Elks Club, 2709 is the number of the lodge. It's at 53 Old Kings Road in Palm Coast, Florida. If you'd like to come and donate or sell some stuff at a ham fest, this is your opportunity to help out James Lee. James Lee's the owner of Shack in a Box, lost his feet and his hands as a result of a medical incident, and uh, he needs help. So he's my neighbor, he's my friend, and I'm working to do this ham fest to raise money for Jim. So if you'd like to be a part of that, come on out. And uh, I thank Ham Radio Deluxe for the donation they made of $99 gift, gift certificate. If you already have Ham Radio Deluxe and you have the, uh, the service program that you pay, I think, $49 a year for, you can get two years extension on that with this gift certificate. So if you win it, you get to, you, you'll be able to use it. So anyway, just slipping that in, a little secret for you. KO4 PDI, back to the recording. We're going to listen to Dr. Mike now. Hello, everybody. It's Mike, KO4 PDI. Again, the ham fun guy. I'm along with Michael. Doc, oh, I didn't know you were a doctor. Yeah. You know, I got this pain, right. my I elbow know. right here. When I, I do this, you know, my doctor said, don't do don't that. Don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. All right, let's get serious now. 
We are here talking about Ham Radio Deluxe. Dr. Mike here, he's got it running right now. He's got WSJTX running. <clears throat> he's got the Coster running. He's got Ham, Ham Radio Deluxe Alert running. Why don't you tell us what all those things are, Michael? Yep, so basically, uh, within our logbook, um, there's a, a new feature called HRD Alert. It came out probably about 24 months ago, something like that. And um, it collects the decodes out of uh, WSJTX or JTDX, and it puts them in a pane over here so you can, uh, and I presently have people call me, so here at the show, I don't have a radio here, so I'm using remote ham radio. Thanks to remote ham radio for letting us use the radio while we're here. Okay. Um, so I'm connecting over the internet to a flex, and from the flex, I'm basically tr you know transmitting and receiving out of WSJTX. I can see the decodes over here. Now what happens over here also, in our software, I'm gonna pump this up a little bit. As I can see all those decodes and it shows me, this is the country piece. So I can see based on now, here's somebody calling me. I'm gonna, now I've worked them. So I'm gonna click okay. And it, when I do, it's gonna show up in the log. Boom. Estonia, he Estonia. just got Estonia. Yeah, this and is you my see friend it just Neil. To his lock. That's my, log. my friend Neil. Mm -hmm. um, and when it does this, and I'm going to come back over into WSJTX for a moment just to click the enable TX so it'll start calling CQ again. Um, as it brings things in, it's going to show you whether or not you need this country. So this is like your at no column, your all time new one. This is the band column, and this is the mode column for country. And if it's a green check mark, it means you've confirmed it. So I've confirmed uh, Estonia, but I've only worked them on, now I've worked them on this band. Right. I've confirmed them on digital modes before. Over here you can see that the B4 means it shows I've worked but not confirmed this station on this band and mode. Exactly. So now I got people calling me again, which is cool, United right? States, Germany. So hopefully, I'm already transmitting back to them. I didn't really even have to go back to this. I just know that it's happening, right? Right. And so a lot of people would say, well, this is kind of busy though, Mike. Um, pare it down to just what I need to look at. So in our software, sometimes it's hard to find the mouse on the screen. We've got something called work status indicator filters. These icons here are called work status indicators. So I only want to see, let me get rid of the CQ zones because I'm going to say, well, mouse again, mouse again. It's over here. Uh, there it is. There it is. I'm going to get rid of that. Only show me new DXCC countries I need for a given band. Okay. And then I'm going to set this filter right here. And turn it on. Now the only ones I'm going to see are the ones I need to work. It's, oh, there it is. Now it's on. Okay. And uh, so yeah, I worked just this made one. another contact. And uh, as you can see, I'm not spending that much time in WSJTX. I'm just in here. I'm going to come back over here and again enable the TX so it'll call CQ again. Um, if I were really serious about this, I'd go and try to start calling some of these <coughs> stations that I need. But you can take the same approach with grids, counties. If I scroll down a little bit, wherever my mouse may go. I need to make the mouse bigger so I can see it. Put the trails on. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it. They're, all these are foreign countries, so the counties aren't showing up. But if I turn the uh, filter off, I'd see, There's here's Monmouth, Monmouth County. County. That's right, New Jersey. Yep. I used and, to live there, I know. And so Not I've never, Monmouth, I've never worked Monmouth County on this band or mode. So that's what I can see here. Oh, if so I, the B is for band, the M is for mode. Right. So if okay. I scrolled over, I can also see CQ zones and prefixes. Just got another one. Oh. Or he, no, that was the same one, I think. He, he uh, sent you another. Oh, yeah. Let me you ask you this. Have, that uh, happens to me a lot, where I get people that, I guess, I I accept it, and I think I got a QSO, and then yeah. they try to do it again. They send me a 73 It's because again. he didn't hear you. Okay. And so he's he's doing it. He's so now, which one again. of these do you keep in your log? The first one, the second I'm gonna one? I'm going to keep the first one. because Because okay. for me, it's got both the signal reports in it, but the last one didn't. Right, right, okay. So I would just keep the second one. Because um, this is what happens to me. I just, I got here. Uh -huh. Some guy sent me seven uh, QSOs he said I did with them. Yeah. That are not in my log. Yeah. None of them. 
Yeah. But they're like from 2022 to 2023 over over a long period of time. Yeah. He must have never done it, and then went over to EQSL and said, "Okay, yeah, they approve all these." So now I'm getting it to to confirm it. I can't confirm it because they're not yeah. in my log. I don't. He must have thought he confirmed with me, and he actually didn't. You know what? I was. Yeah. That could be because a lot of times that happens too. People drop off before you get the 73. Yeah, I mean, if they don't complete the macros, it doesn't end up in the log. I felt bad. The guy sent me seven things to approve, and I had to delete them all and tell them they weren't in the Sometimes log. Sometimes I just kind of strike it up to an experience. There have been there have been large um, de expeditions out there with operators trying to do FTA. They have right. no idea what they're doing, yeah. and the stuff didn't go into the log. So that's like the guy. I live in Florida. First hurricane we had since I moved here was Hurricane Matthew. Everybody on my street had a generator. None of them worked because they never tested yeah. them. They never tried yeah. them. So I understand being prepared, understand how the program works and, and use it. Could you just show us the cluster? I want to show people how yep. I do it at night. Yep. You can leave FD8 running. I'm going to switch over to calling CQ so it at least uh, so it at least answer somebody if, I, if they okay. call me. So, so I just want to point out to people, down here, this is all the people that are on right now. On uh, This is the people that are on 12 meters. On 12 meters. If I change on. bands, it would follow the, you know, you can set it to where it follows the band. Yes, that's but what it I comes, did. But it comes out of the DX cluster, so the DX cluster is located here. And it's the same scheme, right? right. All the icons right. mean the same thing. So it's a familiar way to go from DX cluster, HRD alert. It's just that this data comes from the internet. Right. The HRD alert comes from your decodes. It's otherwise the same kind of look. Now, for the people at home that are watching this, what, this is just one sliver of what this program does. <laughs> this is, we're talking about 5% of the Yeah, this is like 5% of the entire yeah. program. Yeah. Do me a favor. Just, I know you can't actually do it because you're not ready for it, but can you show them how the satellite tracking opens oh, yeah. up and yep. uh, the other stuff? Because it does decode on, on CW. It does satellite tracking. It does... I, the satellites, I love the way you can look at the predictions for the future. Right. If you can just show that to people Absolutely. and what, how that works real so quick. So all the, all, the all the applications can be launched up here. So up here at the top of the screen, all the programs have a button up here in the button bar. So, you know, if I'm going to start up the, the digital modes application, I just click here. That's digital master. That's for... Uh, that's for CW, right? Well, or PSK31, or RIDI. Okay. It does everything that WSJTX doesn't do. And most of the stuff that Joe's got in WSJTX is uh, licensed in such a way that I can't add it to a commercial program. Right, right. But sense. anyway, within this, you can, uh, you know, I currently have it set for RIDI. There was a RIDI contest on yesterday. But it'll do all these different modes here, which is CW, RIDI, PSK31. And you, if you click, if you drop down to one, you'll see that there are various different versions of each one of these. So you can see them all in there. If I if I worked you, for example, and I put in your KO4 call. KO4 PDI. KO4 PDI. Um, and it looks you up, finds out where you are. I click on F7 to put you in the log. And if I pop back over here, I would see you in the log. So it's all one integrated package of software. That's me. See. So then... If I come back over here and I want to go to the satellite application, I could start it here because, again, the button bar is in the... In it's every, on all the different all the applications. Uh, applications you have, right. And um, we're, on a, we're on a relatively slow internet connection here at the show, which has yeah. caused me some fits. So some of this is... It takes a few minutes to load when you're on the Some of this is internet. loading up some of the uh, latest uh, Doppler data, but you can see... This happens to be a uh, Alpha Oscar a 8. Oscar. I don't even know if that's a still an active, but yeah. I was looking at it yesterday because some of the passes were really good. But if I want to, for example, go to the ISS, I'll just scroll down here, find the ISS. And it shows me that the next best opportunity for the ISS comes on Monday. <laughs> right. Um, and what this is showing is the relative to the horizon, how high it's going to be. So this is going to be a very low pass. Right. This will be a max of what? That's less than 10 degrees, yeah, probably. Probably eight. But like you look over here, this is going to be almost a 90. Seven, degree, almost 80. Almost 80 degree pass, which means that's a very good pass to get. You'll have longer time when it's overhead. Yep. So which, I love satellites. Yeah. How would I control a rotor with this? Um, pretty easy. If I, if I, if we had one that was in in view right now. 
Right. It would actually you'd see the demo rotor moving because right. over here you can see right now that the rotor's at 105 degrees azimuth, <clears throat> and that comes from here in the rotor application. If I if I pointed it at Europe, which you don't do for a satellite, obviously, right. in the satellite application you would see that it had changed. And if I went over to the the logbook application, you would see that it shows up here because you can change your rotor from within the logging. How do you out. control the rotor with the software? What What's In the, the interface for that? Oh, well, you need something like, um, <clears throat> if you have a Yesu rotor, they, Yesu sell these, uh, sells these GS232Bs that you put between the actual rotor control box and your PC. Okay. Um, there are other ones, Fox Delta has one that's really nice and I like it a lot. Um, our friends over at um, um, Idiom Press have one that's a rotor card that goes right in. You can find them on. Uh, that, that's one on thing I never learned too. how to do. And the reason I, I got lazy, I ended up getting the sat box, which does, takes care of my Doppler for me. So I don't use HRD for satellites, right. but it can be used for satellites. I've seen a lot of people right, use this right. for satellites. Yep. And it's if you don't have a sat box, this is what I would use. Yeah, our satellite. And that was the one question I had. How, what's the interface between your software and the rotor? Yeah. Like on the sat box, it's just a wire comes out and plugs into it. But this would be different, and that's what you're saying. You need like a separate card, right, to go between. Right. Okay. That's now, in, not in, in the in the rotor app or in the, in the satellite application, in the next version that we're, when we do the update for satellite, there'll be um, an add add log entry QSO box over there that'll basically have call and grid, just some really quick things that you can put in there. And you'll be able to log satellite contacts from right out of this? the yeah from right out of this, wow. so you won't have to bounce. So have to right now, back and forth. Yeah. you'd have to bounce back and forth between these to do it. Here, just like you did with DM seven eighty, you know, I put KO four PDI, you know, EM thirty seven or whatever your grid is, right. and hit enter, and it saves it, and then you move on to the next one. Because otherwise, we're all either recording it with a recorder while we're operating, or right. we write them down as we go and try to. Put them in the PC later. Well, Michael, thank you so much yeah. for giving me some time. People, you know what happens? People get stuff and they don't read the instructions and they don't, and they end up thinking, oh, this is a dumb program. This is a great program. This thing does so much. Do I use everything it does? No, but everything right. that I do with it is so simple once I get it working. And I highly suggest you guys get into Ham Radio Deluxe and tell them about how to get into Ham Radio Deluxe. Yeah. Is it expensive? Do you have to pay a yearly subscription fee? Nope. What we don't, comes with the money that you pay for? We don't it? sell the subscription. We don't sell the software as a subscription. You buy a perpetual software license. We sell that for $99.95. You get all the stuff that I showed here. Mm -hmm. um, one year of unlimited support and one year of all the features that we release. And at the end of that year, if it does everything you want it to do, just keep downloading the in updates because they're free at that point. The support. Tell, tell them about the support. If you pay with the, the renewal subscription, which right. is 49 bucks, I think. Yeah. You, if you, once you get it, if you renew it for another year. If you, re if you get beyond the first 12 months right. and you want our new features or you want, you, know, you want access to our support because let's say you just bought a new radio right. and you need help getting it connected or whatever. Or I built a new computer and I can't get it to work. Right, I exactly. call you guys. All that. I've done that. So, so that's why I know that. <laughs> so, you know, I've got technicians who are on the phone all day through right. Team Viewer helping people with those kinds of things. So I forget his name. There's a guy right down here in Ocala. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, I, I don't know. Was he here? He was here yesterday oh, and Friday. Bumber. So you missed him. I, I but missed yeah, him. I wanted to meet him because he's helped me out a lot. But yeah, that's that's optional. Um, yeah, but probably about 50% of our customers buy the uh, renewals. Right. But even if you don't buy the renewals, you should keep downloading and installing the updates. And while you won't get support or the new features will be locked, you'll get the, like for example, the next version of Logbook 6.9 will have dramatic performance improve improvements because we're getting rid of access as the database. It'll be okay. SQLite, a lot of other stuff in there. So customers want to do that even if they're not buying a renewal. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Cool. And let's say I bought, a, I bought it, I had it for a year, I didn't renew, and then I run into trouble. Can I just go and pay the $49 again? Totally. At that point? And then we, we had a customer over here the other day that um, hadn't hadn't bought a renewal or you know anything since 2014. Wow. So he bought one and it grandfathered him into everything since 2014 Excellent. and gives Excellent. him a new 12 months. 
Well, thanks a lot for your time, Michael. You bet. It's Absolutely. been a pleasure. It's a great program, and I highly suggest it. So, uh, thanks for take my word by. for it. You'll enjoy this. Thanks, Michael. KO4PDI 73. 73.